yeah, so I went, had the opportunity to go to this uh, watch convention, which it's like only dealers get to go there. Only if you have like a store and you have to be, you know, if you're an outsider, you have to be invited in. It's very kind of exclusive. Really? They, don't, they don't want random For watches. Bro? I mean, I, yeah, but you're really dealing with, you're dealing with thousands of dollars of watches. I mean, mm. some watches in that room are ranging from hundreds of thousands to mm. there's probably some Richard Mills that are like close to a million in there. So really? it's like, you can't just have random Joe Schmoes cause you'd have people, you know, trying to rob the place kind of mm. stuff. So they got to keep it pretty secure. And granted the hotels that they're in, like these Vegas hotels that they're in, they're in the back rooms of like these conventions where it's like nobody's, it's not advertised. You're not gonna see any signs. Like it's kind of like very hush hush, but really? it's really cool once you're in there, man. It is, uh, and not many people are gonna really notice, but people buy, when they're buying and selling these watches in that room, it is so fast. The amount of money that's being made in that room, mm -hmm. it blew my mind when I was in there. Cause you don't think about that. You're just like, whatever. But man, the guy I was with, so everything's done. Uh, well, the way he did it, not everybody works that way. Some people are more old school, but everything was kind of in group chats, uh, like in, in uh, WhatsApp. So like they have all these people. So this guy had pretty much everybody in that room on a WhatsApp group, in one group, right? On a feed. And he's the only one, he's like kind of running that feed, but it's not going crazy, you know? So this guy will buy and sell watches before he even buys the watch. And what I mean is he'll go over to a booth, right? He'll be like, hey, how much, how much, let me see that Rolex. Guy pulls out a Daytona, just standard 116500, you know? And uh, he'll see it. He'll, before he even buys it, like I said, it's word of mouth. Like you gotta go in the back of the room, fill out an invoice to do all these stuff. But once I say I wanna buy it, you gotta stick to your word. That's just how it goes. Mm -hmm. So he'll take a picture of it, write the price, how much the guy is willing to offer him for it. He'll make his price, send, take a picture of it, you know, uh, send it out on this group chat mm -hmm. and then all of a sudden it's like john wick right. it's just everybody's phone just bing 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 bing, yeah, bing, yeah. bing. he sold the thing before he even bought it wow. and it's just rinse and repeat the whole right. time and then he has a guy that's just the buyer and this guy is just a mile a minute he's mm -hmm. just going around the room buying all the good deals before you know the weekend ends when mm -hmm. all the deals have gone that's just how it's run and, and, it's, and those are rare watches or, or what is some it of them about? Are rare, some of them are rare. They're just the higher end watches that, you know, us, you know, is like Gucci and shit or like. No, so, so how watches are based is it's a lot of hype, a lot of how the movement, the history, you know, Gucci mm. and all that kind of stuff you see in the malls. They're all like really yeah. fashion watches. Uh -huh. um, they're not really, you know, the, the high end watches. You know, the reason why Rolex and, you know, uh, uh, AP and Pat, Patek or Patek or whatever you want to call it. Mm -hmm. uh, Richard Mills, they're all big is because, you know, Rolex has a history and, you know, they have all these crazy histories before, you know, and the way the watches are made and the Rolex is just like indestructible and it's like all these things, you know, I'm not going to nerd out on all the, <laughs> I don't even know how I'm all sure, these things are made. I'm sure it's a, it's like kind of like Coltage kind of like just yeah well they, they all have cult followings right? and then they also have celebrities that endorse those followings and it's right. just like well i don't like this person so maybe not you know that whole thing so it's just like one of the most hated watches in the world is hublot but there's a lot of people that love hublot really yeah and it's just because hublot uh and and there's a guy on youtube uh nico leonard he taught he just youtube okay she can't stand hublot really and he kind of has developed a cult following and uh, uh leading behind that but uh yeah he's great man he's he's definitely very entertaining to watch i want to know um, what these fucking watches look like bro yeah so 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 type in like um just type Here. in a rolex one one six five hundred it's like the most okay rolex It's like the most basic Daytona. It's just a simple reference number. And a lot of people spend a lot of time memorizing all these reference numbers. A lot of times if you're dealing with, if you're selling, yeah, see that's a, it's a Panda dial Daytona. 
that watch, I don't even know what's going for now. I'm kind of off the market right now. I'm kind of out of it. But the watch market tanked a couple, like last year. Really? So that's, that's a legit. That's watch. legit. You, yeah, yeah, yeah. You can walk into a room and people be like, oh, shit. Yeah, well, I mean, as far as yeah, if a watch guy sees it on your, right. your, your thing, they're going to be like, holy shit. But a lot of times they're just going to assume it's fake unless you're rolling in a oh. Lambo. And like, there's so many fake Rolexes out there. That's like, all right, man. Really? Like, so, yeah. So, but, so but you I can mean, probably find yourself something like that, but it's fake. Oh yeah, like, dude, what they makes make, it real? Like, is dude, it the they metal? Make, they make things called super. They gotta call them super clones mm. that are basically so close to being accurate that <laughs> you have to get a professional watchmaker that's been in the industry for years mm. to break that thing open and realize like this screw isn't the right screw. Like, it's so close to being the real thing, but it's hundred. It, it's a fraction of the price that you would normally get a Rolex on. And no one's going to know the difference except for me. Like if I had, if I was rolling up with one of those watches, I couldn't live with myself if I was wearing a fake one. I just, just knowing that it's fake, mm -hmm. you know, I would just be like, I can't be but that But people guy. that aren't watch people could they get would have no sold idea. a oh, yeah. fake one easily. Happens right? all the time. Right? Happens all the time and for it's, like expensive oh yeah dude and well and they pay the real rolex price for a, a fake one and then they go you know something happens or they chip it or scratch it and they go into a real watch guy and go to get it repaired and then they realize hey man did you know this is is not a real rolex and then they right. get all butthurt and then they get mad at the guy they bought it from and then it's a whole right. big thing and then now they're out thousands and thousands of dollars right. because it's As that's why been, that's why it's so such a crazy industry man you right. gotta really know what you're getting yourself into and, and you got to have people that you trust and then not to mention when you get into vintage watches if you get into vintage that's a whole nother story because yeah. it's just like there's specific guys that that's all they do is vintage watches hmm. so and those are the guys to go with because if you go with somebody that's you know familiar with vintage but not an expert hmm. you know you're kind of guessing Right. No, this is a this looks like an amazing watch, dude. That yeah. looks like a legit watch. Like Yeah, but I mean you can get watches that look similar to that that are some no name micro brand and you'd be just as happy. Hey, did you ever wa see that, that yeah, watch time. that Conor McGregor had that one time? Yeah, yeah. And McConnor McGregor has a lot of what the, the Astronomia, the one that's yeah, all see through. Yeah, that fuck. is a Jacob like and Co. A cool. That's a Jacob and Co. Astronomia, or uh, I think it's Astronomia. I'm not really a fan of Jacob and Co. Too much. It's he's he's got a lot of reputation and got a lot of you know history behind him, especially back in the in the hip hop days in the early 2000s. Everybody wearing this a five shit? time zone. Is yeah. that the one you're talking about? That one's cool because that is a roulette wheel. In that, I would actually oh, love I to have see. that one, but yeah, I'd be wanting to go to Vegas too much if I what had that. What the fuck, dude? How much is that worth? <sighs> I don't know what it is now, but I'm I'm sure it's probably around right around a million, 1.2, 1.3. Could be give or take. I'm not sure on this exact watch, but a lot of his astronomy watches are around like the million dollar mark. And then if you're gonna bag it, diamond it out, I mean it just it, really diamonds are a weird thing too. Okay, when you see hip hop guys with all these diamonds, mm -hmm. most of the time they're not factory. They call them factory set. And basically the only difference is that they're the Factory is just a jeweler that came from that company. So let's say Rolex has their own jeweler and he's the one that put the diamonds in, then it's factory set. Mm. And then it's the value is way up because not just you have the mechanics of the watch, but also you have all these diamonds and it's set perfectly because Rolex and all these companies. It's like are, a brand new car from the dealership yeah right yeah instead of going uh you know instead of going to someone else down the street that can put in diamonds for you you know right. you're going to the actual company that's perfectly set like yeah that's what everybody strives for yeah. so but all these hip hop hip hop guys a lot of times they get these these like already fake cartiers and then they put like moissanite diamond like moissanite stones in there which moissanite you see all these uh these videos of people using uh, diamond testers. Mm. I was like, well, diamond testers, they can detect, I think it's like the heat of diamonds, but also moissanite. So a lot of these, a lot of these jewelry they have is moissanite, 
which they're testing it and they show the camera oh look it's real and it's like no dude you spent like 50 dollars at the mall for that and you're pulling it off as a you know but it's like you have to really care about what all this wearing, shit yeah, yeah like it's, it's that's, like that's nico right there he's, he's talking about it's jacob and co that's nico who, 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 nico leonard uh that guy i don't know if you saw him for a second yeah he's uh i think he's irish this guy yeah he's he's uh yeah he's hilarious man you gotta watch his <laughs> it's hilarious really very rambunctious very uh energetic guy always talking about him when Let's you really hear him. He's talking about the PRX, which is actually, I'm wearing a PRX. That is fantastic! Okay. Look at this! I'm actually going to comment on this. You are the daddy. That is genuinely fantastic. You are when the you daddy. you really want your brand to be God tier. That is fantastic! Look at this! I'm actually going to comment on this. You yeah, Tiso's... Are the daddy. Tiso's a really good fantastic. starter watch. When you really watch. want your brand to be God tier. That is fantastic! Look at this! I'm actually going to comment huh okay well that's dope dude like i can't i mean it's kind of like art it's kind of like anything that can get so extreme and obsessed with yeah that you can, you're like you can go all the way down the rabbit hole yeah. with all this stuff yeah yeah with mics with cameras oh yeah yeah i bet you like it.